Not quite live, not quite the other side of the world, but close enough for blues, which is a lot closer than it needs to be for jazz, let me tell you. This is podcast episode 12, and in case you're wondering, yes, podcasts have numbers, and this is number 12. I had a very interesting morning and afternoon today. The local art school is having their senior graduating, well, probably graduating senior, but it's their, it's art show and all the seniors go put some art on display and, and it was nice. It was cool. It was fun. I went over there and, and this one girl try, try to, you don't have to look at me, but just try to imagine this. There was, there was just a video playing like a little, little display screen there and she's the artist is sitting there at a table it's a square table covered with a a boring white bed sheet and it's all gray behind her and she's eating a plate full of chicken and and she's gagging and she's spitting it out and she's trying to eat it again and it won't stay down and her nose is running and she's she's crying and she keeps gagging and throwing up the the chicken and she just keep, and it goes on like this for several minutes i couldn't sit through it uh i got the point which i think was the point uh, well not my point that's a different uh thank you thank you george but i found out later i mean i asked some of the students that were there uh wow look at this See, in this video, in front of the little, the the video screen playing the video was a square table, just like in the video, covered with a bed sheet, a white bed sheet, just like in the video, and a chair in front of it. So you sit down in the chair to watch the video. You're sitting at a table having the same type of experience. You feel like you're sitting at the table eating with her. And there was a lot of brilliance in this to help other people that are watching to share an experience. A very existential interactive artwork type of thing that she had. And it wasn't so much skill, you know, art with a pencil or, you know, a a stick and stylus and mud or paint or ink or whatever. It was, it was, it was concept. She made that experience feel real to people. Anyhow, um, I found out who she was and I talked with her. She, and of course, all the students knew this. She's a vegetarian and her father forced her to eat meat and that's what the video says okay i'm gonna eat meat i'm gonna put on a video (sighs) never ever ever never never ever never ever never ever ever try to boss an artist never do it they will They will go be expressive. They're going to write a song about you. They're going to go make a video about you. They're going to draw pictures. They're going to take to the cartoons and comics. They are going to go tell the world and the world is going to agree with them. And it's going to be the world versus you. Never try to control or boss an artist. Never do it. Oh my. But today I had some interesting conversations with a series of of the, uh, these these graduating seniors and i saw their different art like one guy had this thing it had a light sensor and when you walk up to it this this wad of of eyeballs start looking around it was really what you walk up to it and i, I said I, I, he was there i said what is this about and he said it's about eye contact i said okay all right you're talking about eye contact so I really, really fascinating art show. And yeah, there was a lot of skill that was involved. I mean, I'm not only into abstract expression art. I hope that there can be a type of skill and hard work that goes into things. Um, the hours of practice that go into something that, that means something. So I, I, I like seeing quality brushstrokes and so forth, but, um, I had some, some fascinating conversations with these artists. And the question that I asked all of them, was how are you going to make money how like i mean are you going to starve are you going to give up art and then go into something else 
how how are you going to how are you going to eat in a way that you can continue doing your art, your awesome, cool artwork? And you're like, oh, money. I don't care about money. I'm like, well, you got to eat. And interestingly, this art school also is a business school. I said, you know, you don't want to be constrained. You don't want to be confined. You don't want to have to chase money all the time. You don't want to have to do that. But a lot of artists end up working in the food service industry. Because food service has a flexible schedule. They can get time off to go do their art thing and meet their art schedules and stuff. You can do that or you can get a job as an artist working for some boring company doing some boring routine artwork every day and at least you're practicing artwork. And then you can still go home and do your real artwork you want to do at home. You don't have to conform. Just because you eat doesn't mean that you're not creative. It doesn't mean that you've become a slave. Go feed yourself, man. And and it was kind of an interesting concept because artists really get abstract. I said, you know, the I said the best art makes money. And they were listening and listening and we kept talking. And and they really, really are frustrated with this this general, you know, constraint that culture has on people. I mean, the girl that made this this video, she's being forced to do something that it's not, it's just, it's not her. I mean, when you don't eat meat, meat tastes funny to you. If you do not eat meat, you will gag when you eat it. Now, I eat meat, and, and I think eating meat is fine. But I do understand that if people have never eaten meat for years, that they will gag when they eat it. And forcing someone to eat meat is just ridiculous. And too many artists feel constrained. But here's the other side of that. So do people in the business world. Just last night, I was talking to one of my friends here. He's Czech and, and he's in Asia working for this big Chinese company. And the boss doesn't want to do things the way that they need to be done. And an, an American boss would do it. A European boss would do it. A Russian boss would do it. An Australian boss would do it. But the Asian boss? No, 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 no. He's not going to do that. Just just forget it. Just try to get more customers. Just sell, 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 sell. Don't Don't worry about the quality. And it's like, what? Well, what do you do? So Asia is full of these young people who don't like this old, boring culture. And it seemed that the best kept secret at that art school and business school, it's the same school, is that the artists and the business people both feel constrained by culture. And so I, I, I told, I mean, they were really, really interested in what I had to say. And I'm like, well, it wasn't that interesting. I mean, I'm glad they were happy. But at the end, at the end, I said, I said, stay an artist. You got to feed yourself, but, but don't give up. Good art can make money. Try, try to find the idea that will make money. Go change the world and make the world pay for it. And they will. That's what Steve Jobs did. And, uh, oh, that, that was, that was fun. I, I just had a really fun conversation with them. Um, and then later on this afternoon, I went and talked to some people in government. We talked about ideas in the local government here. Um, and I love to talk in government. I, after all, I'm the most important person in America and also Asia, right? We might, we might have some cool, fun stuff here developing. And I have to tell you, before I run out of time, I had to change the name of print right to pink right, uh, for marketing purposes. And the name was taken, but it's a better name. I mean, pink is controversial. So pink or right dot pink. W R I T right dot I'm out I gotta get to the point. Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan as an irony. Originally, like busybodies, the Samaritans complained when King Cyrus ordered Jerusalem's temple to be rebuilt. King Darius, who came a few years later, ordered the temple to be completed anyway and for the Samaritans to pay for it. The Samaritans brought trouble on themselves. Had they not tried to have a better idea than the king and just gone about their business, they wouldn't have had to pay for Israel's temple. In the end, they only lost. Be a good Samaritan. Help the injured. Then, mind your own business. That's the point. I'm Jesse Steele. JesseSteele.com